Lev Gumilev, a Russian uh, writer, philosopher, and biologist who died in, in 1990 and who's very famous for the, for the concept that nature and nurture are really one and the same thing seen from two different points of view. And the idea that mutual adaptation and genetics lies at the root of the ethnos or the ethnic group. Gumilev became very famous for his connection of the ethnos or the ethnic group to the processes of uh, social and genetic adaptation both to the external environment and uh, as well as to other groups of people within this external environment. This mutual adaptation is what creates an ethnic group. Ethnic groups are as natural as individuals are. Gumilev is important because he laid out a very rational sort of a evolutionary and scientific approach to ethnicity which is very hard to resist. What a nation is, what an ethnic group is here, is certain stereotypical forms of behavior. That these come from adaptation to your natural world and pressures both internal and external. It's a life cycle of an ethnic group. These are creations of the natural order, no different than, than the plant that's, that's in front of my window I'm looking at right now, because it's much a part of the natural order as the ethnic group. The plant that I'm looking at here has adapted to the life being in front of my house, in this environment, cold, hot, early summer, whatever it is, and only when those variables are just right, I see it. Well, the static person will say, well, this is how it is, I don't care, just, you know, I have other things to do. Well, the dynamic person will recognize exactly how much goes into that. Civilization doesn't just happen. The simple biological argument is this. People decide to marry, have children, they do it, generally speaking, almost exclusively with those that are like them, speaking the same language, having the basic customs, having the typical appearance and, and forms of speech and, and, and morals that they're used to. Overwhelmingly, people are going to marry those who are speaking the same language and have the same customs than a complete stranger, somebody who speaks a different language with different customs. Therefore, this is the genetic basis of the ethnic group. But that's not the only thing. The other thing is how this group of families, intermarrying one with another, develop not just in that kind of internal genetic way, but also the personality traits that they develop relative to their environment. A desert environment creates a different sort of person than a frozen tundra environment like Siberia or Alaska. The jungle will create a different sort of environment than a forested mountainous region. Now, Gumilev's argument is this. The more varied the landscape, the more specific problems that the landscape demands of a group, the more they require cooperation and in-group thinking, the better the chances that a very strong, healthy ethnic group will be created. This is the absolute core of Gumilev's thinking. the most successful ethnic groups. The ethnic groups that are going to develop and thrive are those, number one, who really stress cooperation. Society has to cooperate and has to develop a moral system that stresses cooperation in order to survive, especially when the environment is particularly hostile. So if an ethnic group survives a hostile environment, a hostile environment that does not have many natural resources and they're forced to use their wits to survive. 
this will create a very tightly knit, healthy ethnic group. This is a classic example of how an organism has to develop in order to survive. It creates a nation. It creates something like an extended family. And this is how it survives. Basically, biology, chemistry, genetics, this is at the root of the ethnic group. It is not just a social creation. Academics, you know, at least in my field, they have to give their occasional symbolic slogans against nationalism. And you have people like Eric Hobsbawm, who uh, is a Jewish communist, a Jewish Marxist, who was a professor specializing in nationalism, and he invented this idea that ethnic groups are just inventions. Leaders, bureaucrats, they create the nation so as to justify their power. And that is his argument, and that has been the basic argument against nationalism for all this time. But a fact that a, a, a Jewish communist, quite the nationalist himself, by the way, when it comes to the, to the Jews, uh, a, a, a communist sympathizes with the USSR like Hobsbawm can be considered the leader in nationalist studies is really, is really quite frightening and shows you how corrupt and how bad things have, have gotten. You know, all of the attacks on, on nationalism, if you apply it to the individual, the family, will destroy that too. And there's nothing left. The individual is, as we learned with Hegel, is, is a product of, of natural development. It's a product of natural law. It's a product of social development and genetics and the what Vernansky would call the new sphere, energy, and, and, and the constant interplay of things that we're you know, not even aware of at any given moment. The, the tremendous complexity that can permit even a, even a simple civilization to function. All of this before we can utter a word. The national reality, the nation, the ethnic group, is defined in how its parts work together. <laughs>